Hey, what's up? I'm Guy. I'm John. It's our YouTube channel. Subscribe to it and give this video a like. Podcast below in the description. Check it out right now. And check out our friends at decked.com slash ham. If you have a truck, go right now. Decked.com slash ham. Let's talk about Matthew Stafford, John, because that was, I think, probably the first big headline that came out of the Shanahan interview with Sean McVay and Peter Schrager on Flying Coach. And a, a couple of things here I think we found out as a little more background on stuff you and I have talked a lot about, something that a lot of different people have had a lot of opinions on. I think you and I believed that he was interested in Matthew Stafford. He was interested in Deshaun Watson. Ultimately, they drafted Trey Lance, and that's a, a conversation for in a few minutes. But uh, he watched him and loved him. Like, Kyle Shanahan, and I, you know, one thing I wondered listening is, Maybe his plan was to add a quarterback one way or the other. But clearly what happens in the division, what the Rams do, what the Seahawks do, what the Cardinals do, it's part of the Niners thinking. And I wonder if adding Stafford ratcheted up the urgency for him to move up and, and draft Trey Lance also because he loved him. Clearly he really likes him. Why, one thing that stood out to me, what he told Sean, and obviously Sean loved him too, they got him, is that w when your guy's not in your division – and you don't play them very often. And the, and just the team he was on, even when Kyle was in Atlanta, like how many times has he really sat down and watched Matt Stafford? I think it's fair to say not often. Right. And I'm lucky enough, I have a buddy that works for the Bears, separate from Matt Nagy, just as a scout. And he all, he's been telling me, for he's been there for five or six years, like how good Stafford is. And I know Rodgers has always backed up Matt Stafford because they're just around him, right? I think they value his play not you don't just play him twice a year, but you see him on all the cross tape, right? You just if you ask Kyle about some random guy in the Cardinals, some random guys on the Seahawks, he's gonna have a very very good feel for them. No different than John Gruden or Andy Reid would someone in the AFC West. Stafford is a little out of sight, out of mind for sure. I mean, John, the other thing I'd add divisionally, you constantly two weeks from now is Stafford healthy? You want to know what guys, even if they're three weeks away, maybe you're not watching the tape on him yet, but the status of him and his teammates is constantly something you're aware of too. But but don't you think this? Also plays a factor when you're on a team that sucks. I don't get to watch you in many standalone games, right? Like I don't watch you on Sunday night football when I'm already when at I'm home. off, or Monday in my office. You're not playing on Monday night. You play the one. I think the Lions typically play a one Monday night football game. It's usually early in the season. So I just view this guy as really talented, but he might be a loser. And the way Kyle was like, you know, I broke him down. I was like, God damn, he's better than I thought. I that to me was one of the things that really stood out about how much Kyle liked him. But I do think it was complicated because. Uh, it was going to be very expensive to trade for the player and he makes a lot of money and his contract does not run forever. Like you probably have to extend him after a year. Like it's, it's a very, very expensive addition where when you trade for a rookie, he's actually relatively cheap. Now you had to give up the two first round picks, but you'd have to do that for Stafford anyway, but I'm getting an asset that's cheap. I'm getting Matt Stafford that immediately costs 30 plus million dollars. And if he plays well, which Shanahan and definitely McVay were planning on him doing once they got their hands on him, do you think he's going to get cheaper? <laughs> right? What, what? I mean, honestly, a Matt Stafford extent. Let's say Matt Stafford has an unreal year this year. He's like a fringe MVP guy. The Rams are going to extend him after the season. Is it like three years, hundred twenty million? You know, and guarantee like a hundred million. You know, it's, it's a it's a lot of money. Yeah. The other factor is Brad Holmes is on the lines now. It, well, they the had to give up office. their they had to give up their quarterback. He might have liked Jared Goff more than he likes Jimmy Garoppolo. Like even if all offers were equal, and by the way, all offers aren't equal because the Niners' first round pick is better than the Rams' first round pick. Well, they, they didn't have. One. I guess it was twenty twenty two and twenty three, right? So that didn't matter this year. Well, so the Niners are going. We're giving you pick twelve, right? Which is a lot, and we're giving you Jimmy Garoppolo, and we have to give you another one. Where they go, we'll give you two ones in the future, and give you Jared Goff. And in fairness to Brad Holmes. How could I depend on Jimmy? If I'm the Lions, no, I, I, Jimmy being around. I know, but the Niners' picks would have been, at least you would have gotten this year's pick, right? But in theory. And part of it, too, was like they gave those guys six years deals. They're cool with kind of tanking, you know, being it, Yeah, if you don't love any of these quarterbacks, what's the you're, you're acquiring a quarterback because you don't want to draft a quarterback because you want to draft Panay Sewell. I, I, I just think it was double expensive for Stafford. Now, you know with Matt Stafford. Right. It, when I was in Arizona, I yeah. looked at houses and some of the houses, the more expensive ones that had really nice shit on them cost two hundred thousand dollars more than the fixer uppers. But the fixer uppers, you might be able to fix it up for cheaper than it would be 
to get it to the point where the house is $200,000 more. So you actually might end up saving money and your price to acquire the guy is cheaper, right? Because Trey Lance, your first couple of years, you're paying him like five, $6 million. Stafford, you're immediately paying him a lot of money and you have to give all your first round picks. So he has to be really good. Like with Trey Lance, it's not going to be the case here, but there is like an ease into it period in theory, right? With Matt Stafford, there is hit the ground running win right away, right? I'm Which not is, saying that's not with the Niners, but like everything the Rams have done, J- Jalen, Aaron Donald, you get Matt Stafford. Like their their goal, if you walk into the room, is legitimately anything less than I would say being in the NFC Championship game for them would be a massive disappointment. Is that fair? Like if the Niners make the playoffs this year, that's a good thing. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. I'm not saying it, once you lose in the wild card round, that doesn't suck, but it's like y- y- they haven't been winning much beside the one year where the Rams. They've been winning. They were in the second round this year with golf. Now they get Matt. Like they, they, all of their chips are in the middle of the table. Where the Niners do, they have a lot of chips in the middle of the table, but they do have a little wiggle room. They still got chips on the side, right? And that part of that is just the rookie contract. Right. Yeah, the, the, the time that you get to develop a quarterback. And part of that's going to depend on what if he does play, how quickly does he play, what does he look like when he plays? Does he look good? And you go, okay, you got, you know, if he looks good, if he doesn't look good and pressure's on and Jimmy's hurt and like there are ways that the pressure can get high real quickly, even though you're going to naturally have some time, the Rams are not going to naturally have any time because they don't have any I time. Think they're trading all the I picks. Think there's, I think there's more pressure with Jimmy in the game than with Trey. I think people are open minded to like let, just let this guy kind of let's just see what he's yeah, got. I, with I Jimmy. Think, it's like I it's, think the, the the Niners are complicated. There's no way around it. It's the, a complicated situation. The pressure with Trey Lance comes if he's played a sustained amount of time and doesn't look good. Yeah. That's where the pressure comes. Um, but I, I think you go back to Kyle doesn't. One thing you and I have talked about a lot when it relates to Shanahan, even though they do some things that require patience, he doesn't seem like a. He's not a naturally patient guy. Like when we heard him talk about the jobs before he took the Niner job, his plan was I'm only going to take a job with a top five quarterback <laughs> because he doesn't want to, he, he, a, he doesn't want to mess around and B, he just knows if you don't have a top five, if what he said was, if you have a top five quarterback, that guy can get you out of anything. Um, so it's, it's like not, my family. It's like my family. When are you going to settle down, John? You know, supermodel who can cook and clean, who makes some good money. <laughs> like what, 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 that, that's not, a, that's, I, I get. I know he said that, but that's pretty unrealistic, right? Uh, yeah. I, I, well, clearly, I mean, he ended up taking a job that didn't have a top five quarterback, right? They didn't have done, a quarterback. Didn't have a quarterback. <laughs> didn't have a defense. Didn't have an offense. Um, was as bad as it could get. Had nothing but instability. But they gave him a six year contract, so it's like, well, you know, I can. A six year. They said they're going to do all the stuff I wanted to do. They're going to let me hire like four front office assistant GMs and John Lynch. Sweet. Um, but, you know, I, I now look, if he had still been an assistant coach, I mean, jobs do come open. Uh, may, we'll see. Does the Bengals job come open? Now, is Joe Burrow a top five quarterback when that job comes open? No. Is Justin Herbert a top five quarterback? No, but I bet he would fit the bill of what Kyle was talking about, right? Does the Herbert job come open? Um, that's not a great ju- not a great job historically, though, right? The owner's no. questionable. No, it's, you know, but, but again, it's just is the how good's Kyler going to be if the Cardinals job comes open? Obviously, the Texas job came open before stuff got weird with Deshaun. So it does, it does happen. I mean, the Packers job came open after McCarthy with Rodgers. Right? I, I, my pushback on Kyle, and he would know more about this than me. Obviously, he's an NFL head coach and interviewed for these jobs. I think just because it's very unrealistic for Aaron Rodgers is kind of an outlier situation, right? Like Mahomes, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, like these jobs with these young, sweet quarterbacks aren't going to become available. Maybe Pete Carroll retires or something in a couple of years, but even that would be a unique job. I think I would pick the organization, but pushback would That's be like, did. well, the Steelers, the Steelers job doesn't come open, right? Yeah. Belichick's been there for 25 years. That is what he did pa- though, to your point. But he picked the organization kind of betting that they were going to be a lot better than they were in yeah. the past. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Well, he picked them. They gave him everything he wanted. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But, uh, I think because well, even McVeigh was like, you know, no one was offering me this sweet shit. I just had to take the job that I got offered. It, but the dynamic with the Stafford thing is weird though, because he clearly was interested. But I, you know, there mu- I, I, I think one thing there were conversations the Rams and Lions were having. Just one of my kind of the way you read between the lines, Brad. The fact that Brad Holmes had just come from the Rams, and you, I think you initially you said like this is kind of an inside job, right? 
Kyle was not given a chance, clearly. The Niners were not given a chance to match. Somebody was telling him maybe it was an agent or something. You better call right now. Like, it's happening now. But there was no, like, all right, we got the deal from the Rams. Let's call Shanahan to Lynch and see if they'll top it. There well, was none of that. I, I do think that Jared Goff offers you more just stability when money doesn't matter, right? Just to give me a couple years to figure out my quarterback situation and just let him do whatever. Yeah. More than Think Jimmy at any moment could just get injured, and then you're like, well, we're playing with the C.J. Beathard of the Lions, and we're just extra terrible. Yeah, yeah. At least Jared, like, may, hell, maybe our coach is dynamic and we can be competitive, right? When I say competitive, just close to 500, right? You just It gives you some more options. To me, Jimmy's I, – I wonder if the market for Jimmy was pretty terrible because he makes a lot of money and he's always hurt. It's not like and he was the, a five. And if he was making five, six million dollars, I think a lot of people would have been interested. He makes twenty. That's a pretty big cap hit. And I don't think the Niners were particularly willing to like they weren't going to compromise on value. Now maybe they would have gone for, for a second round pick, right? I mean, you'd have to take that, we thought. But clearly they were not going to just trade him to trade him, which is what other teams would want. It's like, yeah, here's a maybe a I, conditional I heard, fourth. I heard Mike Lombardi talk about this and that he's pretty clearly tied in with the Patriots. I it, it sounds like they were never, ever thinking anything over like a fourth round pick. Because just based on the value, like your guy's been hurt. Doesn't make and, sense. And, Bel- and say what you want about Belichick. He does not operate out of desperation. No, it, it doesn't make sense if you're not getting value in that case. Yeah. What would that mean, though, is the question, right? Does it mean it's a fifth and if he starts 14 games, it's a fourth? I mean, I maybe that's but that's not the kind of deal. The Niners are going. He's our starting quarterback right now. We We have Trey, but we don't really know. So I understand it. 